Hello, my name is Ann Paris, and I'm the marketing director for Rothman Gordon. There's been a lot of talk about the Marcellus Shale. Sam, what can you tell landowners about the Marcellus Shale? Ann, producers are knocking on doors asking to lease the Marcellus Shale. Over a mile below the surface of the land, particularly in the hot spots where the shale is expected to be the thickest. This enormous deposit includes most of Pennsylvania and runs from southern New York to Virginia and beyond. Marcellus dwarfs other shale deposits in, in the U.S., including the lucrative Texas Burnett Shale and others. Millions of acres will be drilled over the next 10, 20, 30 or more years, production extending long after that. Amazingly, there are other shales just above and below the Marcellus. The Utica and Upper Devonian could be just as exciting. The gas potential is said to be enough to meet all U.S. needs for decades. That's a lot of energy. Will it make us rich? That is possible. Will it poison the environment? Very little. Landmen some are women, are descending on landowners and bidding against each other for a piece of the action on behalf of rich Texas and Oklahoma companies and companies around the world, as well as local producers. Producers are offering bonuses to get the attention of landowners, and it's working. The lease bonus for gas can exceed the current value of the land. Now, as tempting as this sounds, uh, are there some things to think about before rushing to sign up? Definitely. Landowners can be dazzled by talk of bonuses and royalties, but leases have complex details to understand and change as necessary before signing up. If I'm offered a royalty for a percentage of a gas value, how do I know what that value is? Yes, the question is, one-eighth, 15 percent, 22 percent of what? Maybe the lease says the wellhead price. Like there is a little elf sitting on top of the well with a tin cup collecting gas and handing out golden coins. Worse yet, some leases say the royalty is calculated based on the value of the gas, whatever that means. The operator ends up deciding what words like this mean. Some leases have royalty measured against the sale price with specific deductions. Producers have tried to get out of paying royalties on valuable fluids they take out of the gas before selling it. And if you want the right to audit, you have to ask for it and hope the producer will let you look at the books without a lawsuit. Now, why is the print in a gas lease so small? Every word is important to the lessee. If you put all those words in regular size type, folks might be put off by the length of the document. Small print has an added benefit that maybe landowners may not want to bother to try to read it. Now, Sam, you say there's an I don't believe anything I say clause in all leases. What do you mean by that? Companies can't be bound by everything the landman may or may not say. You have to get it in writing. The clause is found near the end of the lease. What will they put on my land? Maybe nothing. And a lease for a small parcel may say that. It's more likely the lessee will have the right to put almost anything on your land, from wells and noisy compressors to roads and pipes that cut up the property. At least some of this needs to be limited. Why should I grant right to store gas under my property? For good reasons, you should not. At least not at the time of granting the lease. More facts are needed before you do that. What is a primary term? The primary term is the period when the lease can do nothing and still hold the lease. What about lease extensions? Although the primary term of the lease is a fixed two years or five years or longer, the lease invariably contains language that gives a lessee many ways to extend that term. Producers cannot immediately a lease and drill all the millions of acres being leased. They want reserves to keep drilling operations going far into the future and will find lease language to extend the term beyond the primary term to a secondary term. Purchasers of land burdened by a lease will worry about what the lessee producer will do next and when he will do it. 
Now, must I warrant that I own the oil and the gas? No. It's rare that a landowner knows enough to promise that he has good title to the oil and gas. Warranties of title and quiet possession should be deleted. There are other ways to protect the lessee. Now, if the lessee's interest is in the Marcellus, must all the other oil and gas producing strata that I own be included in the lease? The lease form will include everything, but that should be negotiated. You do not want the lessee sitting on reserves it is not going to develop. A pew clause might help. Why is coal bed gas included in the lease? Good question. Some coal owner probably owns it, or will claim to. The lessor should understand the differences in how this gas is produced before including it. When will the drilling start that is going to make us all rich? <laughs> probably not before the end of the primary term, even though you're told there's a rig just down the road. Now what if there is an arbitration clause requiring three arbitrators and a unanimous decision? How can anything be decided if they all have to agree? A stalemate seems likely. It's not a frequent requirement, but it illustrates why a careful reading of each lease is required. Are there other risks to mediation and arbitration? A major risk is that some other party or parties are involved who is not required by contract to arbitrate meaning at least two separate proceedings will be required, possibly with conflicting results. Is there anything else to consider before I sign a lease? Well, you might want to consult with a tax professional or an estate lawyer to minimize your tax consequences from the windfall. Our firm sets up family limited partnerships before a client signs a lease. There are, oh, many other issues to be addressed. Additionally, environmental concerns need attention. Each company's lease is significantly different and the result of years and years of experience and protective company lawyering to get the clauses the producer wants. The company lease is not drafted with a landowner in mind. Changes to a lease do not come easily. The landman with responsibility to negotiate the lease for the producer has limited authority to make changes. Count on delays when he or she must consult with higher-ups. In all parts of lease negotiation, patience is rewarded. Oil and gas leases are complex. Negotiating oil and gas lease provisions is likely to take patience and tenacity. Seeking counsel before you sign a lease is a prudent decision. If you would like to talk to Sam about leasing your land from Marcellus, please call 412-338-1100 or email Sam directly at the address below.